Hey guys, I think things are really going green on here. <laughs> I'm sorry, I couldn't resist. But anyway, this gate right down here. This is okay. This gate. Well, uh, if I can talk, if I can get it out. This gauge is the curse's progress. The further along that is, well, obviously the worse the curse is going to be. And that gauge fills up, so you'll transform completely. And we'll get the bad ending, which I will show at the end of this last fight. So, don't you guys worry about that. Okay. So, just like we did earlier, we're going to smack up these boxes and stuff. There are very, uh, there's kind of small things like this around that you can just gain materials and gain some more money. And even though that's not the biggest concern right now, no, definitely need to get as much money as possible just so you can get some gifts for Elena and get some stuff for yourself. Such as like, oh, like, ah, uh, oh, I just like some medicine and stuff. You can also like, get, uh, get some materials that are absolutely needed as well. Let's just take it down. But I didn't show last time, I don't think I could show last time, is that you can target different sections of, um, Body, as you can see, I'm targeting the torso. That will give us well, beast plan. But I was trying to show something different, but yeah, different um, areas of the body will result in like giving you, giving you different items and such. Which I'll note exactly um, what area gives you what in editing. Being uh, fuzzy, following along what part of the body gives you what item and stuff. However, these, Micro Beasts and Hornets. Micro Beasts are pretty much like the Goombas of this game. They pretty much appear in every tower. And they don't really give you really much of anything at the very least. But, these guys are kind of worth it, I guess, kind of. Now another thing you do with your Reckless Chain is that you can talk, pick up a beast uh, I was trying to... Okay. Look, you can latch onto a, a monster and, um... Well, just yank the chain, it can result in a pretty good attack as well. So, we're opening this. It says Mercury. Isn't that kind of a, a deadly metal, like, like, for inexperience? Uh, ah, if I can talk, isn't that kind of like an... Uh, a toxic metal that can prove fatal for those inexperienced how to handle it. Uh, pretty sure that kind of was. Oh well. Okay, just gonna grapple you, take you out. These guys are pretty much very easy. Just grapple onto them and just can't get the chain. They're really, really, really easy. Okay, but what I actually want to show is you can slam these beasts into a wall. <laughs> this is actually what I'm doing. It's really, really fun doing that. I don't know why it's kind of fun, like the most fun thing in the world, but I don't know. it's a simple pleasure, I guess. Yeah, just move. move, please. Thank you. If you hold on the A button, you can actually do a powerful super super attack. It's kind of the um, if anything, I'd say it's like double strength of just a standard attack. So. I, I don't find it worth it in uh, too many scenarios, but I, I could at least acknowledge it does exist. So, yeah. You can still like farm materials from like tracking down a monster from the tear it down, but you do want to hang on to that. You do just want to just latch onto them and just yank the team. I do highly urge you to have at least one piece of beast flesh with you. Just so you can hold the curse like whenever you need to. Also, oh, beast tank, that's not bad really. Cause yeah, there's another piece of, like, there's another use for beast flesh a little bit later and something that you should also avoid doing which kinda isn't relevant right now but we'll get into that much later after this tower is completion. To the top tower, while study, my job tomorrow is to guard the scholars, keep those wasps from attacking them, and lead them to the nest so they can, they can investigate it. I am serving the wasps. Scholars have come to the conclusion that there must be something important in the nest. Our objective is to ascertain what it is. 
But this is no easy matter. Those wasps swarm near the nest could prove deadly. As one of the scholars is whether it was really worth the risk. He told me that any advance in research could help for the land and we had to go on. Knowledge contains the role, he said. Well that's kinda true. That look in his eyes was the same one you see on the battlefield. So he's the um dedicated trooper to studying these things. I admire him like in a way in the sense that he'll do anything to get, to get, his, to get his hands on knowledge. I mean, you know, it's, it, it is kinda of true to an extent that knowledge can change the world. That's why I'm gonna start constantly trying to sound. <laughs> anyway, right here. Warrior amulet. This is an example of an of an equip. Wait, okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into our items and we're going to well we have to go to your equips. We can't go to all oh, no. We have to go to the equips tab. Generally our lovely beast thing here counts as an equip of all things, which is kind of funny. Alright. <laughs> Oh, there's also this equip zone. You can only have limited um, amount of equips at, at a time. So what you okay, what you want to do is that whenever you get new equips, you want to well equip them in your in your equip zone accordingly. As each uh, as each piece of equipment does take up different amount of spaces, and you are pretty limited to how many um, spaces that in the um, it grabs down, so you definitely want to keep that in mind. It's definitely good to keep in mind for customization and stuff. Yeah, this right here. You want to take down this high. As this methyl, I think it's called. Probably no one's great if I'm wrong, of course. Because I do like to get as much stuff as right as this. Also, I do like to keep myself in uh, I do like to be informative on things. Okay, I guess I can't attack it while. Burning blossom tree. Cause swore that you could do that, but I guess you can. Anyway, the, there are quite areas like here where we have to be some certain enemies in the case of this metal is here. We want to destroy certain segments of it because destroy enough of it. Or destroy a bigger segment here. It's gotta be get myself just gonna be sure I'm absolutely doing so. Come on, come on, show your face, I know you got one. I'm talking to essentially a yeah. Oh there we go. Okay. What you wanna do is attack it in its face. Doing that. There you go, you take it on the entire high. Now I honestly wish I could have just whacked onto it and just Hold on it, but whatever. These are right here. Also, use. I don't have to use an item, but yeah, these doors right here. We cannot do anything about this yet. No, it looks like I need a key. We're not gonna get a key for a very long time, so we're forced to actually ignore those. So yeah, let's gonna climb around the stairs here. I can't I kind of do like the, the, the uh, upside down tree here quite a bit. Like, I don't know, it's just. This, this, this tree just looks so beautiful. It's like, I don't know, maybe I just have a soft spot for nature or something. I don't know, but it, it just looks beautiful. That giant bear here is also this really nice to have. Just the same as destroying any monsters that are on the way here. Just this is again more materials here, and I believe you guys can't. It's a curious sight, a giant tree is going upside down. Nintendo logic or just I don't know, or or a rebellious tree maybe or hmm, I don't really know how a tree can grow up now. And again, why do I bother questioning the logic in a video game? <laughs> Alright. See it's yeah, it's crossing you know, here we go. Alright. This is clear water got this on the fountain. Alright. This right here is also really nice. 
fountain water. This will also restore your life point, uh, restore, restore your life down here, but be careful how many times you use it. If you use it too much, you'll pretty much drink it dry! Seriously, seriously, it's like that episode of Regrets where, um, where Phil and Lil are basically fighting over the, um, fountain and they think they drank it all! That's why the fountain wasn't freezing any water! Yeah, <laughs> it's cute, it's cute. Hey, check out plant food. When I heard we were going to be researching plants, I went and got my old tools from the garden. But they have been no use to me. There's no normal plants. The fact that it's mobile and hunts, and hunts for prey means it cannot be thought of as plant in a strict sense. The way it gulps at any prey off, prey offered it reminds one of, reminds one of nothing much as a starving beast. After eating, it becomes calm, like our pet dog. Its solitary plant-like feature is like it is that like a get it's sluggish at night. Like other plants, it seems to need sunlight. There is much that remains to be discovered in our research at a place these and the annals of a bunch of medical study. So what that piece, so what that text is heading towards is that we come here during the night time, but yes this game has a night and day system. That these plants that we're gonna be um, running into well, fairly shortly actually. Yeah, those things will move a bit slower as opposed to during the day. You know how much solar energy to uh, absorb. It's kinda nice here. That was definitely a good thing to keep in mind. And, oh, that's a lot of thorns blocked in that mechanism of sorts. Yeah, that's actually pretty important. Or that's actually where we need to go to, but we can't enter quite yet. As yeah, those vines are just blocking the way. Those vines, those thorns, those vines, those thorns, those plants, this thing. Let's fall, slope it, to the fair top. We have a sudden change in music. Yeah, let's knock on the door, I'm sure it'll open. <laughs> this door is, this door is changed shut. Let's be ready to open it. Uh, follow the chain! And here's a text about the treetop master. We observed a shining section on the forehead of the specimen number 87, a piece of master that had formed. We completed work on the master of the treetop tower. Master flesh is a mysterious power source from the master. Our ultimate purpose is to harness the power and use it as a weapon. But, uh, but just what is that blue-green growth that formed at the same time as the master flesh? It is very soft when compared to the other parts of the body. Exposed when the master exerts force, so it's likely connected to the master flesh. Can it be an organ of enhancing strength? There's still much to learn and I look forward to finding out more. Unless you don't die in the process, we got a Pinakia. I don't know how that's supposed to be pronounced. I always pronounce it Pinakia. You got another text right away! One after another, that's great! More reading! Yay, we're reading! We have an order to completely remove the thorns from the tower. Those roses are not the common or garden thorns you are all familiar with. Those thorns are tentacles and must be tackled with swords. But bear in mind that this stalk of, uh, of the flowers known as the mother plant is another story. The structure is much more flexible than the thorns around it, so we strike it a number of times, either blade or wither. This mother plant is an important one to deal with. It is very sensitive and can feel and can detect potential threats. If you get too close to the mother plant or touch the roses around it, it will disappear on the ground, and you need somehow to get a hold of it and stop it from moving. Take care as you go about this perilous assignment. So yeah, 
it's hinting towards how to deal with um, this thing right here. Like, I want to scare it away. There is also the, the stuff right here that I want to get to as soon as I take care of the plant. Okay. Get back here, coward! Don't leave me! I only want to kill you! Is there, just so is there something wrong with me killing you? I mean, you're a plant. You should welcome death. Wow, that sounded cruel! <laughs> wow! Uh, it's much affecting like to give that tree there. I'm cruel to this plant. Alright. This text right here gets us into that which we've uh, just earlier. The ceiling came, keeps throws the chambers of the master's luck, making sure the mighty beast cannot run them up. There's no order of chain or was made using special techniques only only our people understand. No matter how hard you try, you cannot destroy it. When the chain is fast, fastened to the door of the master's chamber, when the other is connected to the floor of each tower, this chain is necessary to smash this point of connection. For safety's sake, this, the room the ceiling chain's connections are housed, those are distributed through the towers, and are accessed by sealed doors. The army has the, the, the army has the keys for these this chamber. In fact, you can also use our chain to grab the handle and open it. The army promised to give our people another chance. And who knows if they can really be trusted? That is, why have why we have made sure we can steal away monsters if we need to? Yeah, that gives that, that gets us into opening that that mysterious mechanism right over there. But first, we want to deal with this mother plant here. We want to seal, the, seal this plant in place by latching the uh, chain to the flower and latching it to that pedestal over there. You can latch on to two things at one time using this chain. Convenient stuff to take notice on the plant, which withers away the thorns! They are somehow connected by a root, but the mother plant can somehow move around freely. It doesn't make much sense. Anyway, you can use the C button to pull back on the chain, which we need to use to pull back on this switch. Activating this mechanism, unlocking the door. It's inside. It's okay. You need to check this point of connection before doing anything. This chain is attached to the ground. If pulling can be broken, it can just smash it with your sword. I refuse to believe that the point of connection shatters the chain entirely. Anyway, usually here we find some like ah, here we go. In the ceiling room we find a special item. In this case, it's a safe zone. Think of this like a fairy in a bottle from Living a Zelda. If you have this in your equip zone, you like if you should die. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna find here. If you die in time with this in your equip zone, you'll be automatically brought to life. This is especially helpful to have in your equip zone. Just to be on the absolute safe side here. Oh, this right here. This might actually be the Mephilus. Okay, what's special about these guys is not only their size compared to the rest of the monsters here, but for it progress, you want to rip up his arms, which are this. I do not want to grapple on its body, but you want to cut, move its plants take on the sides of its arms, and rip off its head, sort of, and you want to kill it right here now. And that, you just get us with oh, that right there is also another jerk mechanic. If you get hit with a heavy enough attack. Your equipment items will break. You wanna rip it here because by doing that you can increase your chance of getting stronger flesh. Particularly from those guys. You can get dripping you can get you can get dripping flesh or you get pulsating flesh. 
Dripping Flesh and uh, there are three levels of um, Beast Flesh. There's Center Beast Flesh, the Stronger Beast Flesh, Dripping Flesh, and the Strongest Beast Flesh, Pulsating Flesh. And these type of these types of beast flesh has the um, has better properties to help the curse back faster, faster and further. Basically, the more alive the beast flesh is, the stronger it is to hold that curse. That's how it works. There is a fourth tier, but we'll get into that later. For now, let's enter the master's chamber and take on the master. Do we really have to destroy this thing? Yeah, it's kind of creepy, and we do need the Master Flesh to um, help Elena, but do we really have to destroy this thing? I mean, come on. This thing creates plant life just by walking. Oh, we do need the Master Flesh, so let's. My time to start the battle. Alright, so right here. Just let the chain build up and boom! Yank it away! This thing won't, won't um, act unless you even attack it first. Yeah, we're being a jerk to this thing by killing it first. How wonderful are we? Alright, so, this thing. What you can do is just use its hand to slam to the ground and use its vine to, well, basically pursue us and attack us from beneath it. So yeah, what we're gonna do is just, it's very easy. Just latch onto the master flesh, charge the power of the chain, and yank away. Usually you can like destroy these masters in like four or five cycles using the master uh, using the reckless chain. When dealing with these masters, your primary weapon is pretty much irrelevant. You need to use the reckless chain. Because you need to, ex to extract that piece of master flesh. Also, and it wars. This is what we, this, is, this is what I call phase two of the fight. You, uh, each master will move a slightly different and slightly a bit faster. So right around here, yank it away. <laughs> awesome, not bad. I was kind of random to me, like, well, slightly faster. Well, it's slightly faster and a little differently. You see, he's using an attack twice in a row. Twice in a row, excuse me. Like, he's also. Ah! So let's get a little jumping. Let me get in front of me again. And. Yankee, 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 and. Boom! Just because he got at his health in a critical level does not mean the battle's finished. You want to latch onto it while it's weak, and BOOM! We've done it! The fir first piece of Master Flesh is ours, baby! It may create beauty with its steps, but deep down, it was nothing but pure darkness. Each master we defeat by the way, we gain a little power in our rust chain. So it could be very well that the reckless chain is connected to the um, master somehow. Maybe we'll learn more about that later. Now. Let's get back to the observatory. 
Also, you don't have to worry about doing any backtracking. Like, whenever you exit the master's room, you'll be automatically taken back to the observatory. So that's a really great thing right here. There is a problem with this game, though, but it occurs way, way late in game, so we don't need to worry about it now. We shall do that. And best of all, whilst he's still completely human. Let's talk to her a little. Give her the Master Flash. Is this Master Flash? Oh my god, she's shook! Except for she can see the past. <laughs> but yes. That, is, that does it for this episode, right? So, next time on Let's Play Pandora's Tower, we... I guess we'll see what happens then, and we'll return to the um, 13 Towers to retrieve another piece of Master Flash. See you guys then.